it's Debbie with Kip's Corner. Welcome back. And if you're new, welcome. Thanks for joining me. I'm very excited about this. Um, I got the covers done for my Once Upon a Time journal. They're not done done, um, but the panels are, are done, ready to go. And I apologize. I did not film while I was creating them. I got... Um, <laughs> I started two panels, didn't want the color that I was going with, and I did record that. Um, and this, these are the two that I started. And you can see that's wax on top. And um, decided I didn't want them to be blue. I wanted them to be green. I decided I wanted this to look like you were going into the enchanted forest, and so it needed to be green. And so I started over. <laughs> when I started over, I didn't record, but I will tell you what I did. I used, I started with these um, hardwood panels and I used texture paste um, and then stencil with modeling paste through, this is from, this is a stencil from Creative Expressions um, Tailor Made Journals and it's Lorna Taylor's line. She has a line of um, new it's stamps stencils and then there's a paper pad and so this is the uh, lace stencil so i put that in the background and then i just used paint i used uh let's see i used avocado green and liquid acrylic from prima marketing for finnabar i used um Raw Umber from Golden and High Flow Acrylics. What else did I use? I used a little bit of just regular acrylic paint. This happens to be just a little baby tube. And this is Olive Green Deep. And then I used a little bit of um, Viridian Hue. This is uh, acrylic gouache from Liquitex. Also, in the acrylic gouache, I used Burnt Sienna. That's the brick back here. A um, little bit of black. Let's see. I think that's about it. And then a little bit of soft pastels kind of around the edge. Then once I got the two panels to where I was happy with the color, well, first I found this image. And I was... Um, I didn't want to, I wanted the background colors to be complementary to this, but I didn't want to use these exact colors. And so that's what I, where I came up with, with this, uh, enchanted forest. <laughs> so you're walking in the forest. Okay. Once I got the panels, the coloring of the panels to where I liked them, then I took some chipboard in a brick pattern. And this is chipboard from, let's see, I've got another one here somewhere. Oh, here it is. Um, let's see, from Scrapaholics. And I just got this from, uh, I think I just got this on Amazon. And it's several pieces of this brick. I just used that, cut it to around, you know, the shapes where I wanted and, and put it on there. This is a little crooked, but that's okay. This frame in the background is a frame from Tim Holtz from his frame sets. And I did the same thing on it. I just... Went over it with gesso, and then I added some crackle paste to get that crackling effect. And then I just used raw umber, a um, little bit of black, you know, just, just colored it. This piece is a trim piece, also from Tim Holtz. And I did a little bit of the same, where there's a tiny bit of crackle on there. And they wanted it to look like cracked paint. And then the little mm, pebbles... That is Art Stones from Prima Marketing, and it's the, um, I don't know what's, this is, I've had this forever. These are just the regular size, I guess, Art Stones, not the mini. And what I did there, and you can see over here, is I took the Art Stones, and I sprinkled a little bit into a dish, a glass dish, and then I dropped alcohol ink in it, in sepia, and let that, and then put it on a paper towel, dumped it out on a paper towel and let it dry. And you can see you get sort of different colors here. There's some darker browns and some lighter browns. And then I just used liquid matte medium, dabbed that on my brush, 
dabbed the matte medium on my brush, picked up some stones and just dropped them on and placed them on. And then I let it dry really well. And then I kind of went, came back over and did the rub test. <laughs> Any loose ones, just rub them. They'll pop right off. And it's possible that some of these will loosen up or come off over time, but it, I think it'll still work. So, yeah, that's what I did. That's it. Oh, and on top of the image, to give it a softer, I think you can see that, surreal sort of effect, um, almost like a fog, I used frosted crystals embossing powder on top of the image. And that is also from Tim Holtz. It's really pretty. And it gives you this nice, this texture feels almost like... Um, it feels almost like a canvas, but it also has that frosted sort of, hope you can see that, that frosted look to it. So I thought that just added a little bit to the image. And these are my panels. So I'm kind of really excited that I got them done. Now I've got some uh, corner metal corners here, and I made a major boo-boo. Um, I am going to put metal corners on this when it's all said and done. And so that'll look a little bit like that. So I think that'll be pretty. But I got my brick wall too close to the corner up here and a metal corner won't fit over top um, nicely over that brick, <laughs> the chipboard. So uh, so I don't, I haven't decided yet if I'm, maybe I'll just put three corners on the front and leave it that way. And then I'll, I'll corner the back piece too. So I have plenty once I decide, um, once I get to the point where I'm, really finishing this off i'll decide how i want it what i want to do about that <laughs> it's like oops <laughs> didn't think that one through um that's okay i think it'll still look okay with the three but anyway i'm really pleased with the way this this turned out so uh, that's the cover and now i'll just set these pieces aside until i'm done with the guts and i'm ready to assemble the actual final journal so, speaking of, let me get this out of the way, because these are loose, and you can see it bled through, so now I've got alcohol ink on my, on my table, um, and I need to get that stuff out of my way. Okay, so I will set those aside and, and just let those um, hang out while I'm working on the inside of the journal. The real quick, the image that I found that I used here on the front, I got from uh, Pixabay. Pixabay is uh, pixabay.com, P-I-X-A-B-Y, I think. Um, and I can put a link down below. Pixabay is a site where you can get, you can download images for use for free and use them in your artwork. Um, they they do come with a full licensing agreement. Please don't ever download images from Pinterest or Facebook or Instagram or anything like that and use those because you don't have the rights, the creative rights to those. But if you go to a website like Pixabay, um, you do and you can use them. And I had picked out several. Um, here's a couple of them that I had was looking at. This one actually would, would have really been pretty, but... I didn't, the water didn't, anyway, I decided on this one. So, <laughs> so there were a couple that I liked. I picked one and that's what I went with. Okay. So let's now, what I'm going to do is I'm going to work on, I think one of, uh, one of my collage pieces. And so the idea here is that I select a different tag that was from Tracy's kit, which by the way, this kit would be an awesome for a tag book because it is, you know, made up of so many tags, but I've just chosen to use it a slightly different way. And so I'm going to take each of the tags and I'm going to do a little something on the front of the papers that I've picked out. And then each signature, and I think I will go ahead and do all nine is nine signatures. And then each signature will sort of go with the theme of whatever the story is that's on the front. And so I've done these two. This is Cinderella. And then I've got the rest to do. And so the first thing I wanna do is, I think I wanna work with Snow White here. 
And I don't entirely know what I want to do, but I do know that on this tag, I really want this apple to shine. So I'm going to use um, Wink of Stella, the Wink of Stella brush. These are made by Zig, and they come in a bunch of different colors. This one is clear, and it has a sparkle in it, and it's just so easy to use. Let me stir it up here. And I think I'm going to put the sparkle on the apple. So I'm going to try... to get this on here without getting the glitter on anything except the apple. And there you go. You can see I've got that little bit of sparkle there with the apple and it's just on the apple. Okay, so from here, hmm, what do I wanna do? I don't know. Um, I think I want some fabric behind this tag. Let me first, let me go ahead and snip this off. We'll get the tag ready to go. And I'm going to, I am going to go ahead and round the corners on this one. And I think I will go ahead and ink this. I'm going to use walnut ink if I can find my. There it is. And that'll get rid of that white, that little bit of white edge, and just sort of define the edge overall of this tag. I know some people like to ink, some don't. I am an inker. I just really like. Um, the added touch that it adds and I like defining that edge just a little bit so yep I'm an inker okay and then this paper this this has this page that I'm working on has already been inked okay from there I have no idea what I'm gonna do um, that was as far as I got in my head Let's try some fabric behind her. Well, perhaps some cheesecloth. Um, I've got some colored cheesecloth here, and there's a, an ochre kind of color in here that I might like, I might not. We'll see, we'll see. It might be too, um, too bright. Maybe not. Maybe not. That's kind of kind of cool. I kind of like um, the color there, but I want her defined a little bit more. So I want to put a color behind her. What color do I want to put behind her? Um, I'm looking over here. I have a stack of textured papers. There might be something in here. Um, there's something like that might work pretty. That might be nice. What else do I have here? Um, here's a piece of textured paper. I might like that one too. Uh, oh, what about, what about some... About some handmade paper. That's really pretty. Okay, let's see. Let's see what we think about this. Oh, I'm liking that. I am. Okay. All right, let's do this. I'm going to put this tag on here and just rip this. This is a handmade paper, and it's got um, sort of some inclusions in it of some other paper. It's really pretty. 
but what side do I want to use? I kind of like this side where I can capture some of that white. That um, works well with her shirt color here too. See if you can see what I'm seeing. So I'm going to rip this up. Okay, we're dry and now I just need to figure out which side I want to put this on. Do I want it on that side? Or do I want it on that side? Um, I don't think it matters. I think they're pretty close to the same. I'm gonna put it on this side. And No, I think I'm gonna put it on this side. About like that, kind of sort of right in the middle. What I'm gonna do is just put a little tiny glue in the background in the middle, and then I'm gonna go sew around this. So, uh, let's see, where's my glue? Where's my glue? So I'm just going to get enough on here to just hold it down for me, but stay away from the edge. Now I, you know, I've sewn through glue and it works fine for me. Um, different machines have different, um, obviously, temperamental. <laughs> so do what works best for your machine. See if I can get this sort of in the center. I think that works. Good enough. There we go. That's good. No, it's not, it's crooked. Let's see if we can straighten that up a little bit. There we go. Because I ripped the edges, of course, um, it's kind of hard to get this actually straight because there we go. That's good enough. All right, so I've got some glue here. And what else am I gonna do? I'm gonna sew this on. Yeah, I think that's gonna be pretty. And I like, I do like a little bit of this, just a little bit of this um, cheesecloth hanging out back here. I do like that. Just a tiny bit, so, but I think I'll put that down later. All right, let me go ahead. I think I'm gonna go ahead and, and put the, take the corner off of this. So I'm gonna do that like that. Same way. Get it about right. That I think will work. There we go, that works. And then I'm just gonna rip this off. There we go. And then I think I'll do the same over here so they're even. Oops, don't wanna to put too much water on her. This is an inkjet print. I wanna be careful. All right, let's see. Let's see if we can get that about the same. Yeah, that's close, close enough. Maybe a tiny bit more. There we go, let's try that. And voila, okay. I like that. So far, so good. Yeah. And I'm gonna sort of round the corners myself here. There we go. There, I like that. So let me um, let me dry this, and then I will sew it, and I will be back. Got it sewn. There you go. Just a, just a little edge around it, just to give it a little bit more interest. And that's going to go there. 
Now I've got to decide whether or not I want to include the cheesecloth or not. Um, don't know yet. Let's see, let's see. Oops, I left my glue open, oh no. Um, let's cut a piece of this and find out. Just getting it tacked down so that when I play with this, and I shouldn't be doing this because what I wanted to do next was ink, but um, that's okay. I like doing things in backward order. Ah, everything is sticking to my fingers. Okay. Now what I want to do, so I'm going to put a little bit of ink on the edge of this paper. I should not have put the um, cheesecloth on here yet, so I'm just moving it out of my way because I don't want to get ink all over the cheesecloth. So this is Improvise, adapt and overcome. <laughs> there we go. And now I can pull it back out. So don't do what I did and do it in backward order. There we go. I like that. Gives it just a little bit of definition. Let's pull this back out. And now I think I can glue the whole thing down. Yeah. Simple, not a whole lot of uh, craziness going on with it. I want, um, I want each one of these to be completely different. And I'll kinda, uh, like I said, what I'll do throughout this process is create one or two of these then, you know, wait a few days and then come back and then create a couple more. So that way I'm not doing them one right after the other and that runs the risk of me um, making them all the same. I don't want to do that. Let's get that string down there because we want that string. Get him out, out of here. Okay. And I'm just going to get some Get some glue on this. This is, if I didn't mention it already, I know I did in my first video, but this will be a design team project for Tracy Fox Creative, Love Junk Journals on Etsy. And I will have a link below to this kit so that you can go take a look at it. Um, also, just so that you know, if you aren't subscribed to Tracy, um, please, you, want, you might wanna check out her channel Tracy Fox Creative. Again, links will be below. And um, she is approaching 50,000 subscribers on her YouTube channel. And she is approaching the age of 50 here very, very soon on January 10th, I believe. And so Tracy's got a pretty massive giveaway going on for the 50 and 50. And uh, you also wanna be, you wanna join her Facebook group. I will put links to all of that below in the description box. Got a little wink of Stella down there. Got a little sparkle going on down there. And Snow White is done. And so that is the page of Snow White. So the apple has the wink of Stella on it in clear. So there's just a hint of that sparkle, which is, um, and to me, that's sort of a direct contrast or opposite of the grunge around it, that you've got this sparkly, you know, uh, sparkly thing going on here. So I really like that, that contrast. The little bit of yellow or ochre um, cheesecloth just, just brings some attention the idea is that it kind of zeroes you in on her. 
and then this gorgeous background paper with the grungy look ripped edges and so that is that's the idea behind that one all right so three down let's see cinderella and this is chipboard that i just used some embossing glaze on and it i was trying to to get into that same color blue of her dress and then in there's just a this is just backed with um gold colored paper so that's cinderella that's snow white and then here's my dragon um when i see the dragon i think of the song puff the magic dragon which is um it, it talks about string his strings and sealing wax um and so that's why i put the string behind that a little bit of tea paper just to to again draw attention into him and then some brass accents this is a leather tab i won't put tabs on all of them since there's going to be nine of them that would be a lot of tabs going up and down when the journal's completed and i don't know yet what order i'm going to put these in so i kind of preemptively put this one on but we're just going to say that the dragon will be the first image the first signature and then from there i'll figure it out after i've got them all done so i may go back and put tabs on other ones um but i'll decide that later and so so and so i go along with um just creating these trying to do them a little different on each page um try, so that i don't so now i've used cheesecloth on this one i don't think um, I will attempt to use cheesecloth on another one. Um, I used chipboard here, and so I might. Chipboard is one of those things where you can get completely different, but the idea is that I probably won't use chipboard anywhere else. Um, there's some other things that I want to explore and play with as, as the mood strikes. I may put some texture paste through stencils on one of them. Um, so I'm, you know, just trying to do something just a little bit different on each one. That's the idea here. Um, I was cleaning up my mess and I, I found, I forgot that I'd had this, um, jewel effect paste. It's from Finnabar from Art Extravagance, uh, prim by Prima Marketing. And this one is called Precious Rubies. And so I decided that that might be really cool on the page for Little Red Riding Hood. This is still wet, but I'd used this um, tree limb stencil. Has these kind of veins in it, and I gotta wash that. And um, just went a strip down the whole middle. And I think then this will be my base for Little Red Riding Hood. So I get just a hint of that red in there, and I think she'll probably not be centered. So probably something like that with something behind. It's um, sparkly, but the red and the black almost gives it that, I think, um, sort of eerie sparkly with the tree, the scary looking tree limbs and stuff. Like she's walking, she's still in the forest. So I'm um, gonna let this side dry and then I'll do, I'm gonna go ahead and do the other side here as well. And then I will come back and finish Little Red Riding Hood. Okay, I've got Little Red Riding Hood ready to finish up. Let me get this out of my way. Um, so what I've done is I did the stencil with the Jewel Effect paste. Um, and this is called Precious Rubies. And I put that on both sides through a stencil. And it's a sort of a tree branch stencil. And then um, I've got the Red Riding Hood tag that I've inked around. And then I have a piece. This is from uh, Tim Holtz paper. It's from his craft stock. This is not the color that this one is pack is in, but here's one of them. Um, and I just, just used my distressor, distressor, distressed the sides, inked the sides, used my sanding disc and sanded the sides. So I'm getting some of that craft kind of coming through and, um, and it's worn and torn and, and it'll go on here, something like that. So that's the idea there. 
and that then will go on here. So what I'm doing now, before I put the tag and everything together, is I wanna decide if I want to put any kind of extra metal embellishments on this, and I think I do. So I've got a couple things here to look at. Um, I've got some signals, these are metal signals, and I've got three different colors here. I've got a red, a black, and a burgundy. The red, I think, is the wrong color red. See, it's more of an orangey red, so I don't like that. It's not dark enough. Um, the burgundy could work, but mm, don't love it. I don't love it, but I think the black is a definite possibility. I think that'll look good. But then I also have, this is just a metal hanger thing that I think might look kind of cool on here as well. Maybe like that. This would go up a little higher. So I would put that on after. And then I've got a couple of these little fasteners. This is a brass and this is a silver. I don't think, I think the silver is too bright, but a little bit of that brass I think will help. And then I also have another one here that is the straight. So yeah, I think I'm going to use, I think I'm gonna use some brass pieces on this tag before I put the tag on. So I'm just gonna randomly, uh, let's see. Let's put one here, or let's put it right by her basket. So you just pinch these and it pinches right in. Yeah, I like that. Just a tiny, you know, just those little touches. Um, I think I'm gonna put one more on there. No, no I'm not. Um, but now I need to decide, do I wanna put something like that up at the top? Uh, let's glue this on and then I can go from there, I think. Just the one little, the one little tab on there. Okay, let me glue this on. I like that. I like the green pop there behind it. Kind of gives you that whole, you know, still in the forest look. All right, now I'm thinking I might want to put a little tab up here on this one. Or better yet, I might want to put it down here. I like that, just for fun. Okay, so I'm gonna put, um, I'm gonna get a black brad and put a little black brad through that. And I might put one of these here. I think so, I think I'm gonna put one of those there. There we go. I have glue all over my fingers. So one of them is on the actual tag and one of them is on the outside. And then we're gonna pop this little guy down here maybe, just for fun. And then maybe there's something up here too. Does this go on here? Nope, that's too much. Actually, what if? What if those two are just side by side, like that? Again, just for fun, I kind of like that. Okay, let me go get a black bread. Poker tool, and I'm gonna poke about where I want that, which I think is about right there. So I'm just gonna poke just so I can see my mark. And now I'll go all the way through. If you're doing this, watch your fingers. I have poked myself before. The poker tool is um, it's got a sharp point. Oops. Black brads, big fingers. 
Okay. There we go. And these are just the little tiny things that'll add, make this piece, this page, you know, unique from the others. And so now I may use these little clippies on other pages. As a matter of fact, I think I did on the dinosaur, but I probably won't use these little hoops on another page. Now I'm thinking that I want to do the same thing here where I have one of these up here. There we go. I like that. I like that. Okay. I'm gonna come down just a little. I'm gonna put her about right there. Maybe a little higher. How about there? How's about that? Yeah, okay. Let's glue it on. And I'm gonna roll this just to get because I'm going on top of texture. So I want that um, Fabri-Tac to kind of squish in between. Okay. Now I'm going to very lightly, very gently do a tiny bit of sanding along this edge. Little Red Riding Hood is done. So here we go. We've got the green paper in the background that pretty much matches the green on the paper, very close. I just stressed the edges of the green, brought that craft paper kind of forward, put some nicks and things in there um, just to make it look old. And then just, just now, just sort of very lightly did a tiny, tiny bit of, of sanding on the actual tag itself. Um, inked around both of those pieces, of course, and put them on. Then I added just these little tiny touches here and here. And that is all on top of this Jewel Effect paste, which has a shimmer to it in Precious Rubies is the name of the color. And now that is Little Red Riding Hood ready to go. So so to recap, I've done, let's see, have I done four now? Let's, let's see, let's just a little, little, yep, four. Okay, I've got, let me put that away. I've got Little Red Riding Hood, I've got the dragon, I've got Cinderella, and I've got um, Snow White with the apple, and the apple, you can see that sparkle in there. So hopefully these are looking different, but yet, so I'm trying, doing different techniques and things on each page, but yet I want them to be, they're all gonna be in the same journal, so I don't want them so different that they don't look like they go together if that makes any sense. So that's why I'm keeping all of them in the tag shape. Um, that'll create that consistency. And then um, just a few little elements here and there that you might see repeated. You know, here's an, an example where I've got a little, a couple of these little brass pieces, fasteners, paper fasteners on here. I've also got a couple here, but these two pages will not be um, these two signatures won't be back to back. They'll be one will be um, in front, one will be in a different part of the journal. So that's okay. Those kinds of little elements may um, that was not straight. And it's still not, but that's okay. There we go. It's still damp enough that I can move that a tiny bit. Um, these elements, m the repetition would be very minimal. Um, so, for example, there's sewing on this one. I may sew on another one. Um, I definitely will. I really like the sewing, the sewed edge on that. So, that's where I am so far. I'm going to keep on going, like I said, until I get through all nine, four down. Uh, I guess that means there's five to go. 
and um, I'm going to step away from this for a couple days now and come back to it um, later with perhaps just some other brainstorm, other idea that I can use to go along with it. And um, I'll be back. Thanks for joining me. Bye-bye. Thank you.